My name's uh, Tom Ridge, and this happens to be uh, my first ever Melbourne rower. Uh, I just started at Cold Tramp three days ago, so this is the first time I'm here. And uh, primarily because I'm a glutton for punishment, I thought it'd be a really good idea to give a, a talk in my first week on a new job. Uh, so um, I'm actually from Brisbane. I'm going to be working remotely, and uh, I help source out talks for the Brisbane Ruby meetup. Uh, and when I say I help outsource talks, it's generally that I hound, nag, harass, uh, beg, plead uh, other people for talks. Um, usually because uh, I've had some good conversations with them or there's been a little bit of a slack conversation or we just happen to be spitballing an idea and I think that would turn into a really good talk. Um, so frequently though when I'm asking people, hey, would you like to give a talk? I can get these sorts of answers. Uh, I don't know what to talk about. Or someone's already given a talk on my subject. Or that I don't have enough experience to give a talk. And I kind of think these ideas are a little bit bullshit. <laughs> Not the people, I, I need to stress that, just the idea. Because at the end of the day, your story and your experiences make all the difference to a talk. Because of your unique history, your perspective, and the entire path that you've taken to lead you to this point, or what makes you, you. It's the reason why companies have hired you, and it's the reason why colleagues call you their friend. It's what gives your talks a flavor that only you can provide, and our community can only be richer from the input. Now, if you're not at all interested in giving a talk, this is probably not going to convince you. That's fine. I hate writing blog posts. I'm terrible at them. I delete them almost as soon as I'm done writing one. But hopefully it can help uh, inform you and guide you about storytelling and how it actually can help you in the workplace uh, when trying to convey a problem to colleagues or uh, communicate some interpersonal issues as well. So why all the emphasis on storytelling instead of talks, right? And that's because I kind of believe that the best talks are stories. We're the sum of our collective experiences, handed down from generation to generation, person to person. Uh, everyone who's attended a row row in this room has built on their experiences from their attendance. And stories in all mediums have served as entertainment, as knowledge transfer, as warnings, and as a way to preserve our collective history. Storytelling kind of allows us to connect and understand the world around us and makes us feel like we're part of something. It's an important, memorable, and valuable social tool. I literally sprinted back from a, uh, a bit of a team outing today, and we spent a good uh, 20, 30 minutes sort of asking each other questions and sharing personal anecdotes. And it was really timely, because I was sitting there thinking, like, this is how we feel together because we're sharing a part of each other. And stories happen to be a very effective way to get your point across. This doesn't mean they necessarily have to be fictional, although I'm known to embellish a few details to make myself sound awesome. Just that you're able to tell that message from your own perspective. We can learn and lean on each other's experiences in technical and non-technical ways. Stories help our audiences empathize and understand why change is sometimes needed and when it's needed. Because often a good story can force us to change our idyllic view of how development, our industry, or our culture should or shouldn't be. If you're giving a talk and you're giving a story, your calls to action could be that change that you want to see in your community or your workplace or just even in your home. And my favorite thing about storytelling is that often they can inspire us to be something greater than we are. We cheer with our heroes, we identify with our heroes. Having heroes that look and sound even just the smallest bit like us makes that connection that much stronger. And the more similarity, the stronger that connection. Oftentimes they can help inspire us to be better humans or write better code. And studies have shown that stories can actually stimulate the brain and change how we act in our lives. 
Uh, if you come see me for the slide deck after, I've got a few links to the studies. I'm not just pulling this out of nowhere. But above all else, stories help us empathize and understand. Uh, raise your hand if you've seen this film. Okay, that's actually less than I was expecting. <laughs> I have I have twin toddlers, uh, but I would I'm like very proud to admit I've seen this film multiple times before they were born. I'm just like I'm all up in kids' films. So this is a scene where our main character here takes a bite out of cheese first, and we start seeing this visualization of what cheese tastes like, and then he'll take a bite out of strawberry, and we start seeing this great little visualization about what strawberry tastes like. And then our main character takes a bite of both. And a literal symphony of flavors is displayed in this scene. Now raise your hand if you've just mentally recalled what strawberry and cheese tastes like. That small scene, you're totally along for the ride. You get a sense of what cheese tastes like. You get a sense of what strawberry tastes like. And you start to imagine them both together. And it's just incredible to me that they've been able to visualize something as abstract as what something tastes like and convey that to you. And in an industry where our presence is largely in front of the keyboard, being able to empathize with others and try to understand things from the perspective of our clients, our customers, our colleagues, our friends, is vital. It really does arm us to help get our points across and to sell our arguments in a more convincing way. And it turns out it's something we do already. Personal stories and gossip make up for about 65% of our conversations. I know every single time I call my mum, I'm just blabbing about what the girls did that day. And I'm usually embellishing a few details. But you enjoy it. It's a shared experience. You all have a unique perspective and lens that has been built up over time. Your background might be a different career path that's led you here. Another background, avenue, that makes your path here different to someone else. But parts of that path will be similar or the same as some of the audience. And talks that you can immediately identify with because someone has struggled or succeeded and they have to share a similarity with you are huge. Stories where we can identify with our heroes are the ones that resonate the most. And even if we can't relate to that path, we can build our understanding of a problem anew or recognize that someone else might be going through a struggle that we might have otherwise dismissed and build empathy. And that can only be a good thing. And it turns out stories actually make for really, really good talks. All of a sudden, the talk is elevated to, from something that I can just listen to to something that I can be captivated by, to something that I'm entertained by. It locks into that concept of entertainment. And when we start talking about our experiences rather than things, we're more likely to engage our audience. And telling and being told a story activates parts of our brains and enables us to take on information more readily. And some of my favorite talks have got like lots of aspects of storytelling. Uh, Sandy Metz's talks are fantastic because it's always on a personal experience that she went through that led to better code and better outcomes. And Jeff Casimir gave a really good uh, keynote at RubyConf AU in 2016 that was just on his personal experiences. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find anyone in the audience who didn't like resonate with at least one of those points that he raised. So, Hopefully, at this point, I've kind of convinced you about the value of storytelling. <laughs> so how do you find your own? If your answer was typically, I don't know what to talk about, I'm hoping that you can recognize that your journey is made up of multiple steps, events, and moments. We can hear about how you finally conquered Git, or how you overcome a troubling interpersonal issue in the workplace, or how your long-term plan came into fruition, or maybe you just kind of want to play with an idea, inject your personal experiences, and riff on that as part of your talk. Take some time to reflect and recognize those moments, and they'll become great talks.
Think about what it was about yourself that made those events easier or harder to deal with. And what would you tell others so that you could see they could succeed where you might have failed? Or how they could make changes for the next time? If someone's already given a talk on your subject, like that's ever stopped Hollywood. <laughs> Fair enough, as an organizer, we might not want to have the same topic twice in a night. But so many stories rehash a common theme, common ground, common ideas. But it's a unique telling of that story with the unique composition of characters that makes it interesting and engaging. Not only that, but your ideas on that subject might be completely different to the speaker beforehand, but just as valid and just as interesting. If I don't have enough experience to give a talk is one that I often hear, but your lack of relative experience makes these old topics new. They come alive again. We had uh, a lady give a talk on an introduction to Git a couple of months back, uh, Sherelle Collett up in Brisbane. Uh, and it was one of the best talks on Git I've listened to because it was just injected with so many personal experiences, trials and tribulations, and how she resolved them. And as an organizer, when I'm speaking to our attendees, often new attendees, some of the most requested topics I get are for introduction level stuff. And our most recent meetup was solely entry level and we had double the turnout. So if you're new to programming and you're experiencing all of this yourself for the first time, telling us how you've experienced those things means that those of us who've been here for a little bit longer can better appreciate what it's like now and are better equipped to help you out when you need it. And some of the best talks have been on the driest of subjects, just because the speaker introduced a bit of themselves into that talk. Lastly, I'd like to see more talks that don't always correspond to a happy ending. Um, Lauren Hennessy very kindly gave me permission to uh, show this tweet, but I kind of think it really neatly encapsulates the point. Like, I want to feel normal, we need to feel normal. Now, I'm not gonna repost the replies. Uh, you can go look it up. I've got a link to this tweet in my slide deck. But sometimes that we have shit days and shit experiences. And we need to know that our heroes and people that we look up to have dealt with that too and still found the will to keep moving along and not beat themselves up. Because stories dealing with failure can give us that hope that we can deal with what life has to throw at us in our darkest days. Although what we're going through right now might not be that bad in the scheme of things. And for the speaker, it's often cathartic because you can start moving on from that failure by no longer internalizing it. And you've started repaying your sins by making sure the path in front of you for others is paved over. And to be honest, these are some of the talks that I'd like to see more of because they make really excellent warnings. As I touched on earlier, that, that team catch up today where we're all sharing our stories and anecdotes really helped feel like we uh, grew our team culture. And sharing your experiences helps grow this community's culture. Because it can help make the community in the image you want to see, and it can help make you feel more of a part of it. Because above all else, it's you, the audience, have come to see. Your personality and opinions should drive the talk out. And I've never met someone that couldn't tell me a good story. So, as an organizer, a bit of a plea from me that please do us the honor of sharing your experiences. I know it's a big commitment in time, but if you've been holding off at all doing so, we'd really love to hear your talks. They're a great way for you to level up and get involved in the community. But above all else, we'd be richer as a community for having your talks take part. Thanks. <laughs>